I just love this sign. Let's get to work. What is up, YouTube world? Iggy here with Foutech Unlimited. Easy build today. We are doing a outside the waistband holster for a Glock 17 with a Surefire X300 and uh, no bells and whistles. It's going to be a new set of uh, belt loops that I I use them a lot here, but I've never showed them on the channel. So we're going to go ahead and uh, throw them in here. They're pancake loops. At least I don't recall doing a build, but it's literally this. And I got to tell you, I'll tell you a couple secrets with the build. Uh, it's really not that hard. It's a quick gig. It's 4.30 now, so we'll see how we go. Obviously, filming the process and talking and running down everything slows down a little bit, but you'll get the general idea. It should take around 45 minutes, but again, that's not doing any of this. Um, big tip for you, the Surefire X300, which if you actually look at this, you can see that it says Surefire and then X300U Ultra. Uh, a and B is the mount style so i don't remember which one is which but one of them is a screw and the other one is a clamp that you move down and take off this one's the clamp version if you block it right it'll work with both which is what i always do now this light is 300 dollars plus or minus and that sucks when you have someone order a holster for this light but you can go to wish.com and get this light for less than 80 bucks actually i think it's like 67 dollars. we'll see obviously it comes from china it is uh legit a piece of crap it is uh the the led inside is absolutely your cell phone is brighter than this flashlight it is junk but it is the same housing as an x300 so in our world we don't care about this so you could go go ahead and save yourself over 200 dollars if you buy this light and for those of you who are like, you can't use that light because it doesn't work. You're right. It physically, it's not bright, doesn't really work, but it is literally the same body. And I have verified it with legit Surefire X300s. So in your face. Now, uh, these are the pancakes and uh, these are one and a half. We're going to go ahead and run them. And it's, uh, this is going to be an easy build. So let's just, let's just get right to it. First thing is first, I got my foam because it is 62 degrees in here. It's a little, a little chilly, um, but you want your foam hot. You want to be able to pretty much stick your fingers uh, through it and touch your, touch yourself. Um, that's how warm you want them. You, if you got them cold, they're going to be stiff. They're not going to work. And the Glock 17 with the X300 after blocking is going to be pretty thick. What we're also going to do is we're going to do uh, another set of foams. So we're going to do one on top and one on bottom because I want a crisp line at the bottom of the X300. And we're going to be heating them up in here because it's going to be two sheets of 8x8 or a little bit larger. And they won't fit in my 15x15 15 15 press. Sadly, I'd have to get another press. So for now, in there, which I don't care. I've been doing that for seven years now. And I don't feel like spending $1,500 on a bigger one. So... Without further ado, let's get to town. Again, simple, easy build. This one's going to, like I said, Glock 17 X300. We are gonna go ahead and rock our round widgets. And like I said, those are gonna go right there. And we're gonna use the long side on these guys and we're gonna throw that just like that. Now, before I put any of that on, I'm going to take our, uh, that's not it. Yep. medium tape and go ahead and do five layers on each side And I'll get my razor. And this is a DIY drone. Uh, I got this, honestly, I got this seven years ago. Um, I have made hundreds and hundreds of holsters off of it. Uh, DIY 
is, I want to say, before I found multi molds and uh, knife kits.com. So I ordered a lot of stuff off DIY, and hence, here this is. It's been good. I have broken it. It is epoxied back together and it's holding it, but we're doing good. So, uh, again, DIY.com for these round widgets. They're hit or miss. You got to get them as soon as they get in stock. And these guys are also from them, but I'm not sure if they make them anymore. Uh, regardless, we're going to tape these guys together. You want everything parallel. You don't want it bent and, you know, facing the wrong direction. I'm going to go ahead and stick that there. And again, outside the waistband, so we don't have to worry about pretty much any other blocking unless you want to do it for aesthetic reasons. Do you need to? Absolutely not. Can you? Absolutely. Like it's time for a Home Depot run. All right. And I like to do one fold over, and that gets those perfectly even with each other. And then I'll put that right there. to go and that's pretty much it you can if you want to uh, take a piece of blocking let me just grab one right here and put it across to bump it out you can take a smaller piece put it here so you have a little channel to put it into with light bearing holsters I used to do it and then I just didn't really like it so I stopped doing it however I am going to show you my new way of blocking and there's two ways to do this you can go all the way up to here, and you could have a, uh, it's, it's pretty much a sight channel all the way down, but it's, it's from your retention plate. So you'll have a retention plate going all the way down and then wrapping over, and then you put your wings on that side with your, your eyelets, and then you go ahead and bend it over. Or for light bearing, I like to have two rivets here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop it right around here and then come over. And I just did, let's see here. I wonder if this will work. Nope. So this is for a CZ75. I just did one. So we're going to have to cut another one. Well, I found this piece. And that's going to be perfect for what we're doing. You want to figure out how you want it to, to look. So what, you, what I do when I'm making holsters is I, I visualize how I want the final product to look. And once you go from there, you could figure out how you want your blocking and everything. So we're going to have rivets right here. We're going to come down a little bit. We'll go just like that. We'll come off and we're gonna straighten this up a little bit because we're gonna, you want this parallel. So, that looks good. So I'll go ahead, cut this, be right back. Plate, bam, right there. Should be L perfect. Go ahead, tape this bad boy on. Would this be easier on a vacuum with some molds? Absolutely. Have I invested in those? Absolutely not. If you're ever looking an outside the waistband, two piece holster mold through um, pretty much any manufacturer, but I'll use Pale Horse Concealment as uh, an example because that's where I buy my splits from. Uh, you're looking at, uh, it's like $332 for just uh, your outside with trim jigs. Uh, it's pretty expensive, but technically, you know, technically it's, it's, well, it's two sets of, uh, of holsters. Um, Anyway, this is all set, so let's cut a piece of black and let's cut our desert tan. 
Kydex is in the press. Here's a little trick that I do that helps me remember what I'm doing. This is a right-handed holster, so I'm gonna do this. I set this up above the press in the direction it's gonna go in, so I know what color goes on top, what color goes on the bottom. If it was left hand, I would do this. Because it's right hand, it's gonna go like that. Foam on top, foam in the heat press. This way it's warm, it's very squishy. This is what you want compared to, like I could barely, I could barely do that. Okay, that's what you want. And we're gonna do it in here. So yes, it's gonna be four layers. And the reason why I'm doing four layers is because it is thick. Um, not as thick as the uh, last video I just did, but here's an example of what it'll look like when it's done. Uh, we're gonna be doing different loops. Actually, these are the loops that's gonna be. So this is uh, gonna be the final product for that. But right here, that's where I want it flat so I could add this eyelet. That's why we're doing four. Because if it wasn't the fourth or the third and fourth pieces of foam in there, we won't have a flat um, surface to put that on. It'll be bubbled up. It'll be tented in our world is what we call it. And we don't want that. We're going to want it as tight as possible. So, yeah. And make sure you are using foam because we are doing a light color. Absolutely do not use foam that has uh, ink on it because it will transfer onto the Kydex. And if you notice, there's no ink here or here, none. So it will transfer onto a light color. If it was black, have at it, have fun. You won't see it. But because this is uh, desert tan, we will see it. So we're not gonna do it. Fresh out of the press. And I gotta tell you, it's exactly how I wanted it to look. It's good. And just a couple more steps to do. Trace out what we want. It's right-handed, so it's gonna be easy. It's another reason why I do black on the back side because it's a lot easier to do it on black. Plus, I'm colorblind, so I really can't see white on the tan. Um, but I always do black as a backer because when I laser engrave everything, it shows up best on black. So that's, that's why I do it. Uh, but let's just, let's just get to it. These are the clips we are using. These are the pancake loops. They're pretty popular, and they sit flush with it. So they're actually a really good... Um, a really good option for for holsters uh we're going to be doing uh obviously all normal stuff but we have to before we pull this apart we have to lay a glock on top of it luckily i have a glock 17 sitting here it's uh obviously the blue gun it's not a real firearm youtube and we're going to go ahead and lay that on there and we will see where our uh purchase is going to be purchase is in grabbing the grip so we're going to be right here Okay, so we know we're going to be here. So what we're going to do is we'll take our contour gauge, which can be found at your local Home Depot or Amazon. And at the bottom, we'll go ahead and do this. Make sure it's perpendicular to the slide. And then go ahead and draw each one. The purpose of a contour gauge is to draw... A, a straight line across whatever contour you're working on so like 10 bucks definitely needed so this is where we're gonna be we're gonna be doing coming up and then it's gonna go like so bada bang this is the uh, drill guide we're gonna be using because that's what fit it and uh, it's also multiple, so you could swap out different ones. So this is the one that fits. And uh, with this setup, we'll probably do all five of them on here. So we'll just get this going. Possibly, we might end at the four. Keep the fifth one there and then do our thing. Do four here, five here. So we'll just see how it looks. But you want adequate room. And we're just going to do that. And then we'll get the edge. And then I always put another rivet here. That's what I'm talking about. So clamps it a little bit more, keeps it closer to the, the frame. This side, keep enough room past your sight channel. Let's see what it looks like with both. And with this particular setup, I'm gonna, I always come up to the flashlight. I don't really like coming down here because on outside the waistbands, if you're wearing it and you get a, a cartridge casing in there or anything like that, it is a good idea to keep the bottom open so the casing can come out. So, come over. Oh, 
Actually, that looks pretty good, nice and even. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and clamp all this, and our retention, we'll have, do one right here, and one right here, because our retention point is right there. So easy peasy, lock these on, and drill. Quarter inch. As a precaution, we're going to take two eyelets, put your eyelets in, and reclamp, and go ahead, and now you can drill your retention points. I just did one earlier. I'm so upset. The holster came out awesome, right? Came out great, exactly how I wanted it. But when I put it together, I offset the spacing on the side, so I drilled it wrong. So, junk, nothing I can do. So I had to do it again. But this is all set now. And we'll go ahead and clean our holes before we rip it. Set your retention. You do not want that. And then go ahead and take your screw gun and get those set. Now go ahead, set your eyelids. these lubed. Otherwise you can mar them. And make sure your eyelets are facing the same direction and in the right spot. You don't need a reef on them. It's just a quick boom boom. Uh, I use majority of the time 8-10s which is very good for 0.08 and 0.08 Kydex. You could also use 8-8, um, but I find with this particular press, 810s, um, or at least this die set, 810s are much, much, much better. Before we go ahead and cut it, I want to do a huge shout out to Steve Andrews at Knife Kits or Holstersmith.com. I get all my material at Holstersmith.com. You could go there, get everything you need, free shipping, over 49 bucks for the continental U.S., and yes, they ship overseas. Pale Horse does that too, uh, but we're not doing a Pale Horse thing right now. We're doing a, a Holstersmith. Uh, go there. 
tell them I sent you. This isn't a paid promotion or anything. Tell them I sent you. And literally every single thing you see on my channel is from holstersmith.com. And here's a link to it, or at least how it's spelled. And go there. And like I said, on your checkout and the options, just tell them I sent you. And you know what? It helps me. It helps you. And <laughs> yeah, they do sales every now and then. Their sales are phenomenal. And even if you like upset them, they'll make you the discount code as an example, which is quite hilarious. And in the couple years, of, or actually in the seven years of dealing with them, they've done that once. But they do run them. Steve Andrews is an awesome guy. Great company to work with. I will generally order on, let's say, Monday, and I'll have my shipment by Wednesday. And that's even with the free shipping. So I highly, highly, highly recommend them. And I will say I get about 98% of all of my material from knifekits.com or Holstersmith because it's the same thing. So before I do the uh, tan side, look at the beveled edge if you if it'll focus. There we go, the beveled edge, and then you got your hard edge. That it's sharp. It could you know cause some damage. It could rip you. So you can see the difference. That is all I'm doing. <laughs> Clean it up. I like to use microfiber cloths. Uh, I feel they work the best when cleaning. I mean, look at the, look at the shine. <laughs> Shines from the oil. Uh, I also have Ballastol too. Uh, it works pretty good on uh, on Kydex. And like I said, I do this just to get the crud out and whatnot. You can do a um, warm soapy water bath. You can do that as well. A lot, I know a lot of people that will throw them all in the sink and just, you know. But actually, that reminds me, I just got a new toy. Well, not a new toy. Ooh, I got a little, huh? Uh, I got a new, um, new tool for the shop. So, well, this is nice and clean. Let me show you the new tool. I love new tools. I love investing in things that will A, make a job easier, B, make me money in the future, and C, all of the above. So, uh, it's a Harbor Freight tool, whatever, but it's this. I got a parts washer. I really wanted it and I needed it for the projects I'm working on with all the, all this stuff. And, uh, they discontinued it. It's not selling it anymore. So for a hundred and I think I got it for 130, something like that. Uh, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go out and get it. So I have it here for the future. Given you could literally do a sink and a bucket and, uh, and a, and a water pump and make one for like, Technically, you can make one for like 20 bucks, you know, depending on how good you are on the internet. But now we got one. So I can wash stuff and do all that fun stuff. But anyways, uh, let's bend the wings and get the hardware on. And this guy is going to be going to, um, oh, Hollis, New Hampshire, my home state. So uh, we're going to be going there and uh, let's, just, let's just get it done. First things first, get it set up and uh, get everything in. Always remember, doing it this way, your retention will adjust. It'll actually get lighter as you bend your ears, so you got to do it just right. You want plenty of heat 
don't burn it, but plenty of heat that when it folds, the outside stretches and the inside shrinks so that it doesn't do this because that's what causes the, uh, the change. So um, also another tip, when you're doing holsters, see how my bezel is below, it's right at the edge, but it is below the holster line. If your flashlight is below the holster, then what will happen is if you hit your flashlight, you sit down, you whatever, get a stick, you know, hit there, it could potentially unlodge it, and we don't want that. So you always want coverage. So always want coverage. So my vice, regular vice, big boy, right? It's a record vice uh, since 1909. I got it for free uh, helping somebody, and they paid me with this, which is good because it's a very expensive vice. And this is um, pretty much a potato sack rag, and uh, it works. So, And all that is is to protect the eyelets. And what I do is I put it in the vice to the very edge of the eyelets. Since the front of the holster is facing me, we're going to heat it up and push away from me. You don't want to go too far, but you got to make sure you go far enough. That will come with experience. Nice and hot. Don't stay in one spot. Keep the heat gun moving. And make sure you flip and do the other side. And get it done evenly. And then every now and then check it. Doesn't take long, doesn't take much. I wait till it falls on its own, catch it, and then I use a my air hose. To rapidly cool it. Rinse and repeat. And here's a tech tip for you. Never, absolutely never, shut off a heat gun when it's hot. When it's hot. Uh, you will burn out the element and shorten the life of the heat gun. This particular heat gun is adjustable, and I uh, it's usually three quarters of the way up because this goes up to 1,100 degrees, which is more than enough to melt Kydex. But right now, the heat is off. It'll be cooling. You'll hear that in the background. But for now, I'm going to grab the uh, hardware, and we'll go ahead and mount this all up. Again, this is all straightforward stuff. We're gonna go ahead, this is cleaned, ready to go. We'll set that aside and we'll set these up. What I personally do is I'll put the quarter inch and then quarter inch. And if you notice, there's a side with a ring and side without the ring. I like to put the rubber spacer on the side with the ring because that's gonna go against the Kydex. You can put these how you want. I know of some individuals who put them on the outside of the holster, and then some individuals who put them on the inside of the holster. I personally put them on the inside. Um, is there a right and wrong way? Not really, it's all personal preference, but I like this because it looks like a nice, clean look. Got our Loctite on, grab the correct size. And then just get it started.
And there we have it. So now it's an OWB with two points of retention. I always love the two points of retention because you get the nice uh, adjustability of all that. And of course I have some uh, Glock side of my fingers. So I'll get another wipe down, but there we go. So a full sweat shield Glock 17 X300 with the pancakes. And again, pancakes are a phenomenal option for outside the waistband holsters. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. All you guys who support me help support this channel and pretty much bring all the, the cool gadgets and hardware and stuff to make this process easier. Uh, am I going to be growing this year? Absolutely. I got a few uh, machines that I want to do and they're going to come cool. But as always, I hope you learned a thing or two on uh, the X300. Hopefully you get a good deal on, uh, on X300 when you buy one. And if you learned something from this video, hit like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And uh, if you hit that thumbs down button, whatever, because guess what? It's still positive on the channel, so joke's on you. <laughs> Bloop.